Good morning and a blessed seventh Sunday in Pentecost. Our opening hymn is verses 1 and 2 of 535. 535, first two verses. we begin on page 355 in the prayer book, 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Verses 3 and 4 of hymn 535. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the Old Testament is taken from Ezekiel. The Lord said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, Mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. 
The descendants are impudent and stubborn. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is found in our leaflet, a selection from Psalm 123, and we'll say it together by the half verse, responsibly. To you I lift up my eyes, as the eyes of the servant look to the hand of their masters, so our eyes look to the Lord our God. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy. Too much of the scorn of the indolent rich. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our epistle is taken from Paul's second letter, letter to the Corinthians. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations." Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appelled to Lord about this, that it would leave me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. The power is made perfect in weaknesses. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. This is the word of the Lord. Our hymn before the gospel is verses 1, 2, and 3 of hymn 637. 637, 1, 2, and 3.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath day, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary and brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deeds of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever, when Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. In today's Old Testament lesson, we hear from the prophet Ezekiel. The setting is that God's people are in Babylonian captivity. Nebuchadnezzar came and, and exiled them and wrecked the temple in Jerusalem. So God's people are now in captivity in what is now in Iraq. And it's about 600 B.C., And they are uh, disoriented and confused and lost. And the Lord God gives Ezekiel a message to take to his people. That is, people, your trouble is because you have rebelled against your God you and all your ancestors. They are, quote, impudent and stubborn. And you all need to repent. This is all on you, what you're experiencing. And God says to Ezekiel that he can tell the people, Ezekiel can tell the people, that it's coming from him, God. Quote, you shall say to them, thus says the Lord God. So, coming from God. This isn't Ezekiel. It's Ezekiel bringing God's message. And then God adds the significant point for this morning, according to me, He tells Ezekiel, quote, whether they hear you or refuse to hear, 
parentheses, for they are a rebellious house, in parentheses, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. Whether they hear you or not, they will at least know they've heard from a prophet. In other words, God tells Ezekiel, Ezekiel, expect to be rejected. That goes with the job. At least you will make them know that they have heard my truth. Um, I'm going to gloss over the uh, epistle, except to say that it, it contains this same theme at the very end, after a lot of verbiage, Paul says, expect to be persecuted. This morning's gospel is in two parts. Part one, Jesus and his disciples have been all around Galilee, and they have returned to Jesus' hometown of Nazareth. And Jesus begins to teach in the synagogue. And people who heard him were astounded. What is, what's up with this? And they question his authority. Where does he come off with all this? Who does he think he is? We know about his whole background. We know about it. We know all his brothers and sisters. I'm not sure, by the way, that Jesus was a carpenter. Matthew says he was the son of a carpenter. And a carpenter in those days was a builder. So um, we know that Joseph worked in construction, and Jesus may have followed him into that. Uh, according to Mark, he was a carpenter. It's not clear. Anyway, Mark says the people, quote, took offense at him. And then Jesus gave the well-known reply. Quote, prophets are not without honor except in their hometown. I'm not used, uh, used to Jesus using a double negative. It doesn't quite sound like Jesus, but Mark says, Jesus says, prophets are not without honor except in their hometown. which is similar to other proverbs and sayings like familiarity breeds contempt. That is, it is possible to know so much about someone that it gets in the way of recognizing the full person that he or she has become There's a saying I couldn't find, but it comes from some place where the, the saying is, um, it's, it's hard to go to a doctor that you've gone to grade school with. You want to go to some other doctor besides. In any case, Jesus was rejected. He was rejected. He was amazed at the people's unbelief. And because of all their unbelief, he could do very little else in Nazareth. So he moved on to other villages. So that's part one of today's. In part two of today's gospel, Jesus calls his disciples together and he gives them his authority 
and he sends them out in pairs to advance his work of teaching and healing. And after they received their commission from Jesus, the 12 were no longer just disciples. A disciple is a, a student or a follower. Jesus had a lot of those, had thousands of disciples. Now the 12 are apostles, different. Apostles means they are fully commissioned. They are messengers on a mission. Anyway, Jesus gives them instructions. Don't take a lot of stuff with you. No money or bag with extra clothes or sandals or extra tunic, not even any bread, just your staff. In Luke's version, they don't even get to carry a staff. Pick a house that will receive you, eat and drink what is provided in that house and stay there. Don't move around. Then Jesus says an even more remarkable thing. He tells his disciples that as, as unpretentious and as unassuming and non-threatening as they certainly will be, they will sometimes be unwelcome. They will sometimes be rejected. Jesus says, quote, if any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. That would be uh, a, a, a harsh thing to do. Uh, five years ago, uh, Dede and I were in the Holy Land, and the thing about washing feet became clear. There's a, there's a kind of dust slash dirt that just clings and accumulates to your feet and your sandals. It just cloys. And so if you're going to shake off that dust on uh, somebody, uh, that's a um, statement. Jesus warned them that they might go into towns where they would be rejected. And Jesus foresaw that. He expected it. He said he was sending them out. You remember in uh, Matthew? sending them out like sheep into the midst of wolves. They will hand you over to councils. They will flog you in their synagogues. Talk about rejection. We're talking flogging. For me, rejection is the theme and common thread of this morning's readings. Jesus expected rejection. He expected it for himself and for his disciples. Luke says, whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me, and whoever rejects me, rejects the one who sent me. In our Old Testament lesson, the Lord God knew there would be those impudent and stubborn people who refused to hear the word of the prophet Ezekiel. He knew there would be those people. 
In the gospel, our Lord experienced rejection in his hometown of Nazareth. And Jesus knew his disciples would also face rejection. So what is the takeaway? First, I don't know what it is. Uh, Somebody very smart is going to have to figure this out. First, there is something about God's truth of love that is hard for us to accept. Why? I don't know. It hurts our pride or challenges us or it threatens to take us someplace where we don't want to go. But there's something about God's truth of love that we resist. Second, prophets can be missed if we do not look carefully. It's, it's easy to not, not see a prophet. I recall vividly, it's been a long time, but I recall very well, a Catholic scholar studied Benedictine stuff, wanted to be a priest, Instead, instead, he became a um, U.S. senator. He was from Watkins, Minnesota, and he was named Eugene McCarthy. And in 1968, he challenged Lyndon Johnson for the Democratic nomination for president, and he was a prophet. He was the most outspoken prophet at the time, bar none, about the war in Vietnam. And he attracted some support. He did very well in the New Hampshire primary, got about 40% of the vote in the New Hampshire primary. But the people who kind of ran the uh, Democratic Convention in Chicago, they were, uh, they were a formidable group, and so McCarthy was roundly rejected. Everything he said turned out to be true, but he was rejected. So we should watch for those prophets who are there among us. They're there. Finally, if the Christian faith is done right, it means our own facing opposition and risking rejection and then doing it anyway. That is advanced placement faith. That is our highest Christian calling. Thank God, by the mercy of the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ, not all of us will rise to do that, and we don't have to. But that is the highest Christian calling. That is what Ezekiel and all the saints did. The Lord God said to Ezekiel, whether they hear or refuse to hear, they shall know there has been a prophet among them. God be praised. Love your neighbor. 
Amen. Please stand and we will say together on page 358. We believe in one God, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death, and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified, he has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Page 388. 388, prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the waves of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We remember those nearest and dearest to us and most on our hearts and minds today, especially Connie and Anne and Raphael and John and Joan and Sherry. And Louise and Dan and Peggy and Kiao and Trish. Are there others? I am. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Please turn, if you will, to page 258. 258. And we will say together prayer 17 at the top of page 258. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, you have made all the peoples of the earth for your glory. Serve you in freedom and in peace. Give to the people of our country a zeal for justice and the strength of forbearance, that we may use our liberty in accordance with your gracious will. Jesus Christ, our Lord, lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please kneel as you are able, and we will say together on page 60. 60. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. We may delight in your will and walk in your ways. The glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. And the peace of the Lord be always with you.
Today we're going to say good morning to Deborah and Chalmers Morris. These two good-looking people in the front of that. Please don't leave without greeting Deborah and Chalmers. Um, anyone else? I got nothing. Any birthdays? No. Our hymn at the offertory is hymn 657. I forgot to mention, next Sunday, Lance will be here. We're now on page 340. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down from heaven, 
lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood. Preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, All glory be to thee, O Lord, our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth and didst make us in thine own image. So thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ. Take our nature upon him. Suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. Made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world. The night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make here with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial of his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most mercifully beseech thee, O merciful Father, hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit to bless and sanctify these thy gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. For the same Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God.
We will say together, please, on page 339. 39. Almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries. With the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us. We are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, blessed company of all faithful people. We are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost, be all honor and glory, world without end. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you, and remain with you this day, this week, and forevermore. Before we uh, sing the closing hymn, I'd like us please to acknowledge Joe Boy returning to us today. And we're just unreasonably glad to have you back, Joe. Thank you. <laughs> now, with that buildup, here's, here's how we close. We're going to do verses 1, 2, and 3 of him 616, 616. And then without pause, there won't be anything in between. Then we'll do verses one, two, and four of him 718. So that's 616, write it down, 616, verses one, two, and three, and then 718, verses one, two, and four. M616.
Psalms 7, 18, verses 1, 2, and 4. 